Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now what I have here is an ARM Cortex M3 microcontroller board, which is commonly known as the Blue Pill. It only costs a few dollars and is really, really interesting to use. Now recently they've started shipping kind of an updated version, which first of all is black rather than blue. And it's got an ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller on it with a floating point unit. So traditionally now this is kind of the Blue Pill and people are starting to call this the Black Pill. So what I want to do today is look at the Blue Blue pill versus the black pill. Uh, look at how you can set up one of these from a hardware point of view and from a software point of view and get your own code running on it. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So as I just mentioned, this video will really be in three parts. First, we're going to compare the black pill with the uh, blue pill to see what the differences are. Then we're going to go to the hardware and see how you wire this up into a breadboard so that you can kind of get it working. And then we'll look at the software, how you can download your own code and get that running on the board. OK, so let's look at the differences between the two. So both the blue pill and the black pill are based on the ST Microelectronics microcontrollers, which are, of course, based on the ARM Cortex series. The blue pill is based on the Cortex M3 running at 72 megahertz. The black pill is based on the Cortex M4F, F meaning it's got a floating point unit and it runs at 100 megahertz. Now you can also get a slightly uh, cheaper version of the black pill which runs at 84 megahertz, still got the Cortex M4F in it but runs at 84 megahertz. When it comes to flash and RAM, the blue pill has got 64K of flash and 20K of RAM, whereas the black pill has got a quite a large 512K of flash and 128K of RAM. So that really is quite an improvement. And again, there is that cheaper version with 256K of flash and 64K of RAM. But whichever one you get, you're going to get a faster processor, floating point unit, more RAM and more storage. Now, a couple of the other differences between the boards is you've got the micro USB on the blue pill, where it's USB type C on the black pill. And as I said, the Cortex uh, M4F has got a floating point unit and it has a DSP instructions, which is the difference between the M3 and the M4 from uh, ARM. Now, there are other differences to the chips themselves, and I've listed these as differences to the chips because I'm not quite sure how much of this is exposed to the pins that are actually on the uh, black pill versus the blue pill. I'm sure over time people will start to build up some quite good uh, pinout uh, diagrams. But on the uh, the M3 uh, based chip, you've got a seven channel DMA controller, whereas on the black pill, you've got 16 stream DMA controller with FIFOs and burst support. Seven timers versus 11 timers, two I squared C interfaces on the blue pill, three I squared C interfaces on the Cortex M4 there. The same number of UARTs, however, I think they're faster there on the uh, M4F. Uh, up to five SPI uh, interfaces compared to two on the uh, Cortex M4F version. The blue pill chip has got a CAN bus, which I couldn't find any reference to that in the STM32 F411. So I don't think the CAN bus there, but I think the USB controller is much more sophisticated on the Cortex M4 version. And the Cortex M4 version also has this SDIO interface, which means you can, if you want to build connections to SD cards, MMC and eMMC, something that's not native to the uh, Cortex M3 version. And if we just talk price for a moment, basically you can get a blue pill for under $2. This is buying it uh, from a Chinese uh, website, let's say like AliExpress. Uh, that will probably include free shipping, but you may have to pay taxes uh, when you br uh, bring it into your country. The black pill, the more expensive one, is about $4, so twice the price. If you get the cheaper version with the slightly slower um, Cortex M4F and the slightly less RAM and uh, uh, flash storage, then they're about $3. So $2, $3, $4, depending on which model you want to get. Blue pill, black pill, black pill. Uh, and so I got the more expensive, the whole $4 one, uh, and that's the one we're looking at today. Okay, now we know the differences. Let's look at how you wire one up onto a breadboard so that you can use it in your own projects. Okay, you're going to need a few things besides the black pill itself. You're going to need a breadboard. You're going to need some cables that you can connect different parts of the breadboard. You can use these ones uh, that are very popular, but I've also got some actual proper cable that I'm going to use. You'll see that in a minute. doesn't matter which type you have at hand, as long as it works. And you're going to need one of these. Now, this is a USB to serial converter. It's often called an FTDI 
USB serial converter because the company makes that chip there is Future Technology Devices International. And you also, if you're looking for them online, you can find them because you also need them to program the, uh, the Arduino uh, Mini. Now I'll leave links to some of these kind of things uh, in the description below. But one thing to note, depending on the actual circuit board you get, down here the pins, they are labeled differently. So I have another one, which also has a FTDI chip on it, but it's labeled differently. So you need to make sure you pick the right, uh, when you wire it up, you need to make sure you're wiring it to the correct pins according to the labels on here, not to just the last board that you remember wiring. If you don't want to wire it using this, you can use an ST Link v version 2, and I'll leave a link to one of those in the description below as well, and they connect up to these pins here. I'm going to show you how to do it with the USB to serial converter. Now quickly, just a refresh on a pin board. Remember on a pin board, the power rails run in this direction. So if you connect up power to here, all of these pins will be powered for positive and for ground. The uh, pins here for the actual board go in this direction. And this thing down the middle here means there's no connection, which means when we pop the board now on here, like this, okay, this pin, should push that down. This pin here is not connected to this pin here because of this, this valley here uh, in the middle. Okay, so you pop, first of all, the uh, black uh, pill there on the board like that. And then the other thing we're gonna do now is pop in the actual uh, serial converter like that. Okay, so those are the two things you need on the pin board. Now all we need is some wires to connect up the right bits and pieces. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect up the power. Now on my particular board I've got there. This last pin here is ground, and it does say that on the label there. So I want to connect this row here over to the ground over here. Now I haven't always got the right colors for doing this. So in this particular case, I'm gonna to have to use white because that just happens to be the right kind of length. So I'm gonna go from this ground rail here over to this uh, pin here. Okay, we could make that let me go, a bit more looking like that. So that's the ground pin connected like that. And we also now need to connect the power pin. Now, again, I've got an orange, it's not really the best color. Red and black would have been maybe the best ones for this. Now the power pin on this one is the third one along. So that's the ground, not that one, this one. Okay, and it just reaches, look at that, over to that power rail. So now, when we do connect up this, to the USB port here, it will power these two rails with five volts, positive and uh, ground. Now, what we also need to do is we need to take the TX and RX pins, transmit and receive pins, and put them to the transmit and receive pins on the board itself. Now they are A9 and A10 here. And of course you want transmit on here to go to receive to here and receive, uh, transmit on here to go to receive on here. So the way we do that now is we'll take this first one, okay, and it's the, um, the second pin in. So not this first one here, but this, not this one here, but this one here. Okay, that is to go to pin number nine. That's actually the uh, RX pin, and we put it through to pin number nine on there. Again, we can tidy this up to make it as nice as we want with the wiring. There we go. And then we'll do the same with the uh, with the other one, the TX and the RX. So the, uh, it, the TX pin is next to it on here, so we're just gonna stick that in there and bring that round now to a 10, which is just next to it, like, oh, sorry about this, next to it like that, and again, we can make that a bit nicer if we wanted to. Okay, so that's basically connecting now the four pins off here that we need, that's uh, ground, uh, plus five volts, TX and RX, and connecting those over onto the right pins. And the only thing, we, we haven't provided power to this board now, and so the way we do that is that we need a, um, to connect the ground pin, and you can see, maybe you can just see here, this pin here is uh, ground. So we're gonna connect the ground pin here uh, on this now, straight over to our ground on here. Like that. Okay, and the one next to it is five volts. So we can connect the five volts to the positive rail. And I do actually happen to have a red one. I think will just be the right length for that. So there is five volts, and we'll just connect it to somewhere where it fits in nicely, hopefully. 
like that. Okay, so that's it. Four pins off here, transmit receive, two power pins, transmit and receive go around to the transmit and receive on the board, and then the board itself needs power, five volts and ground uh, on there like that. Now the hardware is all wired up, let's have a look at the software and see how you can write your own code and get that downloaded onto the black pill. Okay, so we're gonna need a couple of different bits of software to do this. The first thing you need to do is go and find the uh, flash uh, loader demonstration program over at the uh, STM website. Okay, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. It's basically, they call it a demo program, but it's actually a, a fully fledged uh, loader, flash loader, so you can create a binary, a firmware, and then download it onto your board. So you download that and install it and uh, I'll show you it working in just a moment, but we need to have something to actually download, first of all, onto our board. So to do that, we're gonna be using Embed OS. Now, Embed OS is actually an uh, a, uh, embedded operating system supplied by ARM itself, and it's quite a complicated, uh, comprehensive ecosystem with IoT device management and deployment and it's got all this kind of stuff that you can do some of it's free some of it you pay for it depends on what it is that you want to do look at all this stuff they provide but for what we want to do it actually provides an online compiler you can write C code and it compile it for this board and then we can just flash it over using that flash uh, program I showed you a second ago. So you need to create an account, you need to log in, and you need to bring up the uh, IDE. Now, ST Microelectronics themselves actually have a range of boards, and one of them is based on the F411. That's the Cortex M4 F microcontroller that we've got you know, uh, on this uh, black pill board, and they're pretty much uh, compatible certainly at a basic level and so what you need to do is go over to the um, the embed website and add this to your compiler to say I want to use the Nucleo F411RE board if you've bought the cheaper black pill then you want to find the equivalent board with the 401 here they've got both boards here supported inside of embed and you want to add that to your compiler so if you're not familiar with Embed OS, it's basically a, a web IDE, a web-based uh, development environment. I need to go up here onto the right-hand side and select the board that you want to compile to. Here are some of all the different boards I've been using over time. And as I showed you on that web page, you can add that board to the compiler, in this case, the F411 board. So that's the board we're gonna compile for. It's a C programming environment, so we include Embed dot uh, h that's a pretty simple standard thing to do we can define a variable called my led and we're saying it's pc13 now pc13 is the pin that the in onboard led is connected to and we're saying it's a digital uh, input output so in fact digital output so that we can uh, write to it and then inside main i've got a, a basically an infinite loop it's a while loop which goes round and round and round and round forever and what do i do i set my led to zero then I wait 200 milliseconds, set my lead to one, wait 200 milliseconds, set my lead to zero, wait now a second, 1000 milliseconds, set it to one again, and then wait another 1000 milliseconds. So basically it'll do a quick short flash and a long flash, a short flash and a long flash, and that just helps us to see that we're running our uh, program here and not some default lead flashing program short and long then it will know that we're running our program and all you do is you go up here and hit the compile button that will compile it and download to your pc the binary file that you can flash over onto the uh, black pill so we've hit compile now it will do the compilation and then as you'll be able to see it starts to do the download which is now here uh, on my pc so I've got the flash loader demonstrator running that we downloaded earlier from the STM website. And what you need to do first of all is pick the right COM port. Now my FTDI uh, USB to serial converters come up as ports uh, COM7. You need to probably download the drivers from the FTDI website or whatever drivers came with your board. And then you need to do a funny keyboard combination on the actual black pill itself. You need to press the reset button and the boot button and then let go of the reset button and then let go of the boot button and that will put it into flash uh, loader mode, where for the bootloader mode so you can flash new firmware onto it and then you click next. 
And as you can see, it says the target is readable. If you hadn't done that keyboard combination right, the key combination right there, it would say it can't communicate with the board and you have to go back and try it again. So once you say that, we have to say, yes, it's worked out that it is uh, the right chip, the 411 there, it's giving you the memory map. And the next thing we should do is go and choose the file. So I've chosen the nuclear file that came down from uh, Embed. And then finally we click next and it will start to program it. So it's now programming it over onto the Black Pill board, that little program that we wrote. And it's been successful. And now hopefully if we hit the old reset button, we are gonna see our flashing LED. Now, just as one little quick thing we can also do is we can make sure the serial port is working. And the way we do that is besides defining our LED, we also define a serial. Now, if you remember here, nine and 10 were the pins that we connected up to the serial port for the programming. So nine and 10 are still the uh, TX and RX pins. And then all we can do if we want to here is we can add in, it's called PC there. We've called this variable PC. So we can say PC dot uh, printf because this is C, remember, and we can just say blink, just as, you know, a little thing to come out here, backslash N. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is we're also, after the quick flash and the long flash, we're actually gonna write out the word blink to the serial port. Of course, from here onward, you can start to do all kinds of things interacting with the serial port, but this just shows you that we can get it working. So we hit compile again, and that will download us a new uh, file. Okay, so here I am again in the flash loader program. One thing to notice over here is I've actually put in a backslash R backslash N, which is necessary to get a proper full line here on the serial output. So we'll go ahead and flash that over. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to use PuTTY because PuTTY allows you also to do serial connections. PuTTY, you connect serial, and of course it's COM7, that's what we were using earlier on. And then we open that up and everything should be good. There we go, blink, blink. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna sit here saying blink, blink, blink all the time. Uh, Joe, so there it is, that's the serial port working. Now, one thing I did notice that sometimes when I've been using the serial port for monitoring and then you try to program with it again, you might need to actually just uh, unplug the serial port and plug it in again to uh, reset that uh, FTDI programmer from what it's doing. Maybe you don't have that problem, I've seen that. So if you do get it, find that problem, just unplug it and plug it in again and then you'll be able to reprogram. So that's it, we're using the serial port and we've got the LED flashing. And so there you have it, the, the black pill, an upgrade to the blue pill. You've got the Cortex M4F, F mini, it's got the floating point unit, you've got DSP instructions, more RAM, more storage, more lots of other interesting little hardware things. Now I ordered mine from China, again it only cost a few dollars, took forever to get here, but when it did I was really pleased and I think I'm gonna buy myself a few more of these. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.